This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Hello divers. Thanks for joining me today. In preparation for a TDI Advanced Trimix course, what we're going to talk about today are the different ways that you can construct a bottle or tank leash. And if you find this content interesting, helpful, or educational, please don't forget to subscribe. All right, so what we're going to talk about uh, here is uh, assembling a, um, uh, a tank leash. Uh, so uh, you're going to need several different components. Uh, you're going to need to use uh, some line. And what I have here is I have quarter inch synthetic line. And um, uh, the way you determine how long you need uh, is uh, the uh, ends of the folded uh, doubled over line need to be approximately the length of uh, your finger. So um, uh, this is my middle finger to my thumb. Uh, that's the approximate length that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be needing. And so um, uh, everybody's dimensions are different. Uh, what you're actually doing, this is just a rule of thumb, uh, what you're actually going to be doing is uh, taking this and uh, attaching the bolt snap to your, um, uh, your left hip D-ring. And then um, uh, you're going to be uh, extending this over uh, your left leg. Uh, and so the length of the uh, bolt snap on the decompression tank uh, needs to be the total length needs to be such that um, uh, the tank will be uh, able to be positioned between your legs uh, rather than um, on your left leg where it could prevent you from um, uh, uh, swimming. That's particularly evident uh, if the tank is slightly negative, uh, it will get in the way otherwise. All right, so we have a length of line here and um, uh, we decide how long it's going to be. Uh, and um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, make sure we mark the uh, line so that uh, we know how much uh, we want to overlap. We want to have some that overlaps because what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be coming up with a method uh, to attach uh, the line to itself. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put this through here right now and uh, get that in place and um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, I'm going to use this bolt snap um, uh, when we get to that. All right, so uh, we will uh, be uh, then uh, positioning like this and, and be using these two things uh, that are called hog rings uh, to secure this together. All right, now what we need to do is uh, we need to decide which type of bolt snap we're going to use, and there are arguments for both. Uh, the argument for the single bolt snap is that um, it will never come loose through leverage the way that double enders possibly do. Uh, the argument for the double ender is that in case the gate here gets um, uh, damaged uh, or clogged with sand, uh, if you only have one gate, then you're not going to be able to get the leash off, your, um, off of your uh, hip D-ring. Uh, so uh, the argument for the double ender is that since it has two different sides or two different ends, if one gets damaged, you can still get your leash off using the other one. Uh, a counter argument to that uh, is that you could use uh, a leash like this or a bolt snap like this, and you could um, uh, use some whipping to tie it to um, the main uh, leash line uh, cord. And if you did need to cut it off because it was jammed, you could just cut that off right there, and your leash would still be intact. So. There's plus and minuses to each way um, you can do it. Uh, I'm going to use this method. I myself have not ever had a gate uh, damaged, um, and um, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so uh, we have um, our piece of rubber here. It's going to be our handle. So uh, this piece of rubber is a um, half inch inside diameter hose, uh, and uh, it's just used to grip things. Uh, it's also used to maintain um, uh, the structure, the open structure of the leash uh, to make it easier to handle rather than having to fight with something that would be uh, uh, stuck to itself or twisted, uh, having some kind of problem like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick this type of um, bolt snap, the single bolt snap, and I'm going to stick this through. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a way of um, putting these together. All right, so there's several different ways of putting it together. 
Uh, you can use what I'm going to use. Uh, these are called the uh, hog rings. Uh, you could also sew this uh, and uh, with like uh, maybe 20 stitches. I've done that in the past. Or you can use little tiny wire ties. The little tiny wire ties are probably not um, sufficiently reliable. So uh, if you don't have anything else that you might, that might be an option, but it's much better to use something permanent. All right. So uh, what I have here is I have these uh, hog rings and I'm going to put a hog ring uh, through here, each one of these things. And um, the sizing of the hog ring is uh, actually somewhat important. Uh, because uh, it needs to be tight enough to go around it, but not um, not uh, so tight that you can't um, uh, put it on. All right, so there is a tool called the hog ring plier, and you can see this. Uh, it is um, different than a regular plier because it's one that's spring-loaded. It uh, helps keep the hog ring in there. The other one is there's little slots. I don't know if that's going to come out on camera. There's little slots on both sides of the jaws. And what that does is it um, uh, makes it easier to um, to uh, crimp the hog ring. Uh, so uh, I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put the hog ring in there and make sure my my uh, my line is stuck down in there. You, know, you don't want to have to do this again. And I'm going to squeeze it. Uh, and this uh, has a tremendous amount of force. And um, I really don't believe that there's any way that the hog ring can come loose if you um, do it properly. Uh, so um, uh, uh, this is a very reliable, uh, very reliable method. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pull on that and maybe make it a little tighter. Okay, and I'm going to uh, do the same thing a second time. Uh, two is one, one is none, and I'm going to stick this in here. And uh, make sure it's in there good. And you can leave a little bit of overlap there. And um, you don't want to leave too much overlap. And I'll explain why that is in a, in a minute here. All right, so I'm going to take my hog ring pliers and stick it in these special jaws again. And um, then I'm going to uh, close down again on this. Okay, there's the other one. Okay, so this is very, very, um, uh, very, very tight. You can see how it's squeezing it. And uh, I've actually lifted my body weight with this. Okay, all right, so that's going to prevent this from coming apart. And again, like I said, you could sew it or you could uh, use wire ties, but I think that this is the most permanent way of doing it. All right, so we now have uh, our whole thing. And what I could do is I could just leave it like this. Uh, and then um, this goes in here uh, in the, uh, into the uh, handle. Uh, we want to pull this through. And um, this can um, uh, move around a little bit. Uh, and uh, some people might find that objectionable, uh, that this uh, might move around a little bit. So you can do two things. Uh, one is you can make a really big um, uh, melt here, uh, and that will uh, help it uh, stop moving. The other thing you can do is you can put a little bit of uh, tackling uh, in here in the center uh, by uh, putting some cordage on there and then wrapping it around like that. And what this is going to do is it's between the two uh, hog ring, between the two hog rings, and um, you don't want to have too many, otherwise it's going to make it diff really difficult to uh, put together. Uh, but I'm going to put this uh, in through here, and then uh, I've only got uh, maybe three or four wraps, and I'm going to pull both ends tight. Okay, so uh, what this does is it provides a little extra um, diameter, a little bit extra uh, space uh, in it when I um, when I start putting the uh, when I start putting the um, the joint here inside the uh, inside the rubber handle. All right, so I'm going to just melt that down so it can't come undone. All right, so at this point, I've got um, a very, uh, very tight bond, and I've got my little mechanism there uh, to prevent it from uh, uh, to prevent it from uh, unraveling. Now, this can be a little bit of an issue. Okay, so 
we want to have this uh, so that it prevents us uh, from uh, having the handle move around but at the other hand, uh, it has to be uh, tight to go in there in order for this to work. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to heat this up uh, because if I don't do that, I think that it's, see, it's not gonna go in. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit uh, to um, make it softer so I can pull this through. Okay, so uh, stand by. I'm going to uh, get some hot water, heat this up, and then we'll pull it through. So I have my uh, cup of hot water here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my rubber handle in here for uh, a little bit. And uh, that's going to soften up the rubber enough to get the... Uh, uh, the whole uh, joint inside and then uh, once it cools down and hardens a little bit it should be very difficult to get out. I'll give it a few more seconds and then uh, we'll start. Alright that should be good. Alright so I'm now going to take my thing and pull it through. It's moving through pretty good. We're almost in the middle. Okay, I think we're about in the middle. Okay, so now it's going to be able to uh, cool down uh, and uh, it's going to uh, be very difficult to, uh, to get out. All right, so this is, uh, this is the complete assembly of the, uh, of the uh, tank leash. Let's talk about a field expedient uh, method for creating um, uh, the same leash. Uh, this, of course, uh, won't be as elegant looking, uh, but it will functionally uh, say, uh, serve the same purpose. All right, so what I have here is I have a piece of low pressure regulator hose, uh, an old piece of that. Uh, and um, these, of course, come in different grades. Uh, you want to see if you have a, a thicker one because a thicker one means there's a good chance that the inside diameter might be a little bit larger than one that's a thinner one. Uh, and also the handle would be more robust because there's more material. So we have our same cord. Um, I'm just going to be using this uh, again for demonstration purposes. Uh, uh, you could use whatever is available uh, if you're doing something that's feel expedient. Uh, and so um, I'm going to take the hose and this particular hose is just large enough for me to fit this through. Uh, if I straighten it out, and so I'm just going to feed it through, and uh, there's uh, there's basically um, basically my handle. And again, uh, I have my choice of either using a uh, a double ender like this, or a single snap like this. I'm just going to do the single snap again. Okay, so we're going to feed that through, and then we have our line here, and we want to do the same thing sizing wise that we did before. Uh, we want to make it. Uh, rule of thumb approximation uh, that size that's pretty close and what we're going to do is we're going to do a square knot here make sure you do a square knot not a granny knot okay and I'm going to pull that through and I'll verify that it's still approximately the right length okay it is okay so the length of this thing uh, the length of this thing uh, again uh, is going to be dependent upon you and I don't really believe that the square knot is a very reliable knot okay for a purpose like this of this importance and so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the thin line that hopefully you'll have and we're going to whip uh, the two ends uh, tight here uh, so that that doesn't uh, unravel so I'm going to take off some cord here I think about I think about a foot's going to be good, and uh, I'm going to do uh, a, uh, a loop here, like that, and then I'm going to take my line and I'm going to start uh, wrapping it uh, around it. So you don't have to do this right next to the knot when you're doing it, uh, because you can slide it down a bit, but you do need to make sure that it's uh, fairly tight when you do this. And 
I would suggest a few wraps and make it tight here. Even though this is field expedient, we still want it to be durable enough to do what we need it to do. And I'm going to pull the loose end here, and I'm going to pull this end again real tight. And then I'm going to push this up to the knot, and then I'm going to cut this off here and here. And then get my burner. And melt it down on there and do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so that's one half of it. And then I'm going to do the other half. It's this part here. Get about another foot of this. Cut it off. And then double it over again. And then trap the loose end. Pull it tight as I can while I'm doing this. Do several wraps. I think I did one more on the other side. Pull this tight. And then again, burn it. That stuff burns really well. I'm sure there are different makes. I really like this uh, this Atwood rope. Not a paid commercial. Okay, and then we're going to slide this down here again. tight. Okay, then we're going to cut off the excess here and here. And then we're going to burn this up, make a big glob, make sure that's not going to come undone. And another big glob here. Okay, all right, so um, here's our field expedient uh, uh, leash. I uh, don't uh, recommend uh, doing this. I recommend giving it some advanced forethought. You do not want to be making a field expedient leash unless absolutely necessary uh, for uh, this particular type of application. That being uh, bottle rotations with uh, uh, in a um, trimix or an advanced trimix class. Okay, so that's the field expedient uh, leash. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope this video was helpful and informative. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.